Hi, James. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. And you? Good. Congratulations. It's a oh, impressive. 250,000 followers. Can't believe it. <laughs> no, I thought you meant Legion d'honneur. Oh, yeah. Also, also, but that I already <laughs> congratulate you. That and that's, great. by the way, I think it's brilliant, you know, and I'm so happy you really deserve it. Um, the blue color is, is for me the nicest one, you know, the, the Legion d'honneur. I mean, but l'ordre du mérite is something very special. And oh. um, I think you really made so much for, for the, the, the French wines in general and, of course, Bordeaux. And uh, it, it's something special. Why don't you tell us your thoughts about 2018? Well, I think 18, um, if you remember, it was a year of extremes and we had this incredible wet spring and then this incredible dry summer. So extremely uh, um, sprayed, uh, ex extremely uh, extreme in the weather, which, is, which was actually, in a funny way, also the case of 2020. I'm mm -hmm. just writing a report on the 2020 and you have some similarities. Um, in 2018, because of this uh, weird weather in the spring, we lost half of the crop due to the mildew uh, yeah. attack. So that means also that you had a selection and an incredible concentration of the grapes, which at the end uh, end up having a beautiful summer and, and beautiful harvest condition. So we all made, I think, amazing wine extremely concentrated so very very powerful wine very deep uh, when i look at the live at the analysis for example it, it's even higher than the 2010 uh, in terms of tannins you know so it, it's very big big wine but i always impressed when i taste them by the balance because you don't yeah. have this feeling it's it's quite incredible babies i would say I don't know what are your thoughts on that, but... Um, How did that happen where you have um, analytically wi uh, wines that are so um, chargé, you know, rich, but at the same time, when you taste them, they're almost, you know, you could almost drink them. There's a nice balance to them. It's not like 10 was much heavier and more tannic, like, you know, really was chewy, but... Yeah. The, the 18s are much more balanced. You taste, they're not tiring to taste. We can taste a hundred wines a day and it's fine. And so many, and the crazy thing is like Claire, uh, who's, you know, obviously a young taster and, and a French guy who is tasting with us. They like, they're like, Oh, like they're saying drink now. I go, you guys are really like, you know, the tannins. And so I just think it's funny. That they're so approachable, they're not at all aggressive. Yeah, yeah, it's very polished. Very, you have a texture which I love. It's it's creamy. So the cabernet have depth, but you also have this freshness. And and I think it's one of the new challenge of Bordeaux having those wines which are richer and richer, but which keep this incredible elegance. You know. Yes. And um, I, I, I had a talk yesterday uh, with a French journalist about 1982, and he was trying to understand how was 82 at that time. I was a bit too young to know exactly to remember how it was, but uh, but it's probably much more concentrated yeah. nowadays. Uh, the yields are completely different. We are we are producing much lower lower yields, exactly. but but you don't have an impression of um, something hitting on your head, uh, knocking on your head. It's really, it's really soft, smooth. Uh, you can enjoy them yeah. young, which is great for the consumer, but you, but they will last forever. Uh, I think that what's, and that's a great point, but I can tell you 1982, the yields were over the, um, what is it, uh, plat platform uh, profond. It was like 15 hectoliters above the limit. So it was around 70, hectoliters so you know i mean huge crop in 82 and so the wines didn't have the structure like these and mm. and they and they were very they had slightly they had ripe tannins but it, it just wasn't even close to the same precision or richness so these wines 
maybe they would be more like things. Okay, I tasted the 82 from Barrel. That was my first vintage. I'm not, I am old, but not that old to have tasted things like 61 from Barrel. I was only three years old, but I can tell you that 61s had that small crop and intense tannins, but at the same time, there's, there's beautiful fruit. So sort of classic like that, but in a modern way. But I, I really like what you say. It's, it's phenomenal how joyous the wines are to taste young and sort of perplexing in a way like, wow, that's amazing. You know, mm-hmm. if you had made the wines the same way you made the 2010, would it have been, it would have, would it have been a lot different? Like, have you advanced in the way you make your wines now? I think uh, we've always been very concerned at Obey with the, the the polished aspect of the tannins. You know, we don't like anything aggressive. We like something very soft, smooth. And in 2010, you had this feeling of big tannins. It was more the character of the vintage. But I think between 2010 and 2018, we kept learning and we are doing vinification always cooler in order to extract always lighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think the quality of the tannins of 2018, uh, we can be very proud of, I think. Right. Uh, it's really, uh, something incredibly silky. Um, no, it, it, it's super elegant, I think. Well, let's taste the first wine then. Yeah. The pap was also the result of a small crop. We have it. Uh, Not because of the mildew, but because of the hailstorm we got uh, on the 26th of May, actually. It's interesting that the wines also in 18, they're not dominated by uh, a particular, let's say, Le Marc de Millezine where you get a, you know, ripe fruit. It, they seem very diverse, like the Appalachians, the terroirs come out. Ten, for example, wasn't like that. Very marked by the tannins. And yeah. do, you, do you find that? Well, probably. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we, we can't taste anything anymore. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> So you have much more knowledge than us at the moment because all the collective tasting of the 18 have been cancelled. And uh, so I have no clue. You have a much better vision than I have, <laughs> which is oh. weird. Well, this wine, uh, very, again, polished tannins. It's a little bit tight on the finish, but really has some classic Pesach character. It's very smooth. You have a certain density. You have this, um, this very ripe aspect of the Merlot, but not overripe. Uh, there's no plum things, you know, it's still fresh. And uh, I like the grain of, the, of this wine, actually. Um, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a very successful Pesac Léonien, I have to say. Um, it's well distributed by Duclos around the world. And I'm happy to see that the clients are consistently asking for it. So it means the style is well known, it's respected, and we improved since we purchased it in 2012, and every year we we, ha- we went a step higher. Uh, we are about to launch the 2019 vintage uh, next week, and I had some clients from England or elsewhere asking uh, about the release because they don't want to miss it. You know, it's a wow. very... Nice value, very well loved, good, well distributed. Why did uh, what, so you don't? Well, why is it that you uh, that it's released later than other wines? It's not on surplus, or what is it? Yes, normally we release it on primeur, but with uh, last year primeur campaign, our well, you remember we had that discussion. We didn't even yeah. know if we could have a primeur yeah. campaign on. And I thought that if we have a primer campaign, we have to focus on the Grand Vin, okay. on the men. And this wine, which is more a, a wine that you drink when it's bottled, I mean, it was less necessary to sell it on primer. So we've just been postponing a little bit. The, the, okay. the wine. All right, let's try the... Uh, Obey the, Yeah, Obey uh, Deux. But it does, so just to refresh your memory, it's the first vintage, which is called uh, under this name. 
so before that, during 50 years, right. between seven and, and uh, yeah. La Pointe d'Obey, yeah. And the first vintage released under the name of Obey 2 was this one. That's definitely tighter than the than the pop, but finer, more polished tannins. Yes. You see the vibrancy of the Merlot are mm -hmm. different uh, at Obey than at Le Pape. Um, I like the energy, which is um, great in this wine. It's, um, it, it's a lovely, lovely, lovely uh, reflection of the Grand Vin, actually. Beautiful. And I'm happy to say that the new name has been uh, extremely successful. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, the La, La Part was was selling well, but never selling well en primeur. This wine, this uh, this new name, um, has been extremely successful, also en primeur around the world. Uh, people love the label, they love the name, so I'm very very happy about that. Okay, so uh, and again, how do you? Um, so this is uh, young parcels then. The, the the you make the selection from younger vines or. Younger vines, but not only, you know, we uh, every year we, we work the whole vineyard as if we would do only obey. And um, mm -hmm. the work in the field, the work in the, the cellar are, is identical for the first and the second wine. It's only when we make the blend that we will select things for the second wine. Don't forget, we also have a third wine, which is called now HB uh, since uh, 30 years. And that allow us to make selection on the second wine. So you can find uh, young vines in the third wine. We we really want to have a very nice label for the second wine, actually. Okay, that's good to know. So let's uh, try the Grand Vin now. Then it's what I like about the wine. Just right off the bat is how complex it is, but also subtle at the same time. You know, it doesn't just pop out of the glass, you smell it, you have to spend time thinking about it, then you find so much complexity and different character to it. Yeah, and it has an incredible length. I've always been impressed by the length of this wine. It's like it will never finish, never end up. Um, the depth is, is, is great. How would you compare this to uh, other uh, Obais? Is it one of the best you've made? Hmm. <laughs> That's a difficult question. Um, that was definitely uh, a very challenging vintage. And yeah. uh, there is a sense of pride and to, to, have, to have succeed this, uh, this, this quality uh, after such a difficult year, for sure. Um, it's a vintage yeah. that you can compare with 2010, 2016, somewhere between the 15 and 16 in terms of structure. So you have big, big structure, but you have this, uh, this very um, smooth, soft and sexy uh, character of the 15, which I love. Um, so it's definitely a phenomenal bottle. Um, it's rare, so small quantity. Oh, that's but a good point, yeah. How many bottles was it then? Oh, we did only 21 hectolitres by hectare. So you see, uh, it, it's half of a normal production, let's say. Um, but the, the rarity is not, it's only quality. Uh, it's really yeah. a wine which is, uh, which will last for, for, for a century, for sure. Um, I like that, but I'm, it's impressive that you think it'll last a century. I'm not sure that's a great thing for me at 62 years old, but <laughs> <laughs> you have children. <laughs> you have children. They'll enjoy it. <laughs> okay. Keep them they'll say, my dad put uh, I don't know what number to, to that wine. And they remember it. <laughs> Do you think the wines will because when you taste it now, there's so much pleasure in tasting it not just intellectually, but also um, just pure pleasure with the flavor and the beautiful polish to the tannins. Obviously, you don't want to drink it out, something to age, but there's a, so much pleasure there. Do you think that it'll close down in a little while? 
or do you think this will be a vintage that will stay open? That's a very good question. And I, I don't have the answer to this question. Um, when you're thinking, for example, of 2009, it never closed up. It's true. The wine has always been sexy. 2010 yeah. closed up, yeah. reopened. Um, yeah. I don't really know about 2018. For sure, we will have to taste it regularly to know. Um, <laughs> but this, this very smooth character, almost creamy, uh, yeah. makes me think that... Um, may not close we, we will see we will see how yeah, what I we'll that impression from the wines i've tasted so far because there's something um also there's some that are a little bit tight at the finish but normally they would be tight at the attack at the beginning so mm -hmm. it seems like they'll they're already open when you first taste it and then the finish is a little bit short but you know that it'll open with just a little bit more age I haven't tried decanting. Like for, I'll try your wine after this, since it's mm -hmm. almost dinner time, and I'll decant it for maybe an hour and see where it goes. I'll let you know. Yeah, good, uh, good. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So listen, well, thank you so much for the conversation and uh, tasting the wine with you. It's always a pleasure, and um, I'm really excited about your. 2018 it's really exceptional thank you james thank you very much i hope mary will cook something nice tonight to to match the obey 18. <laughs>